Okay, we're going to try something a little bit new this time. Instead of me doing all of the demos in class, I'm going to try pre-recording some of this so that we can maybe speed through a little bit faster. We are going to have a rather short uh, November, so I want to try and get ahead a little bit. Now, if you recall, I was having some issues with a few things during class, and partly that was because I was trying to rush, and I started off incorrectly, uh, first of all, by picking the wrong Community Arts Council logo, which, of course, I knew better, but uh, let me back out of this. So I was supposed to have picked up the Community Arts Center logo on the inside uh, right hand panel and instead I did the center one. So I'm going to go back in and do this. So I needed to go into isolation mode at which point I was having a great amount of difficulty because I was unable to get this to work correctly because, as I was rushing, I forgot to swap to my direct selection tool, which was going to then allow me to go in and pick up the text as well as the boxes on the outside. Now, I want to bring open my layers panel and maybe it, my layers panel will stay open. I'm not going to guarantee it though, as I do this so I can find the yeah, there's all the stuff that was selected in here in isolation mode, and I want to be sure and get rid of all of that. Uh, just the text, and I want to be rid of the boxes around. So now if I press delete, everything disappears except for the fact that you can see I still really do have the logo in there. Now if I press delete again, I only have my logo, uh, I don't have the uh, the address underneath. I had to get rid of that extra uh, clipping mask that was around it. So now when I exit isolation mode, I can pick up my selection tool and I can drag my logo down and place it where it was supposed to be. So for those of you who were doing this in the classroom or at home and followed what I did and did the wrong one, just grab this one and move it, uh, you know, swap the two. That's all. You don't have to redo it. I'm, you know, it was my mistake and I pointed you in the wrong direction. Okay, the next thing that I had some issue with was my DNA strand. Again, I was rushing. So let's see if we can get this done correctly. So first of all, I need to select my DNA strand and I need to embed it because if you remember, uh, the book stated we can't go in and do the puppet warp. It doesn't work. So there's, first of all, embedding that image. Now I want to go into my layers and let's close up that file and expand out my clipping path and I want to click on the clip group, the nested one, select that and I'm going to go to object, clipping mask and release. Now I need to release the next, the upper clipping group. So let me go into object again clipping mask and again release. Now that I have both of those released, I can select just the path that's around these and I can delete those. And now I'm ready to apply my puppet warp. I had to do a little bit of looking to find it, but my Puppet Warp tool is under my Free Transform tool. So with that, I'm going to go in and select my Puppet Warp, and I need to select the DNA group. So let me select my DNA group first, and then I'll go in with my Puppet Warp tool, there it is, and I don't want 
the tools that it's given me. It gives me a couple of uh, default. I can go up. I should be able to select all pins and hopefully I can this time delete them. It just deleted that one. Let me try picking up this tool or this pin and see if I can delete it. Yes, that one disappeared. That's fine. I'm going to leave the default one right where it is at the bottom and I'm going to pin another one at the bottom on the right hand side. Then I'm going to pin the top left and grab that pin and pull it over to my bleed. At that point when it's just inside there I'm going to take that and I'm going to rotate that so that it's up top. And I don't like the pull that that's got there so I'm going to select this one and rotate it counterclockwise to pull my DNA strand back and level that bottom piece off a little bit. And you can play with these as much as you like to get whatever shape going on your DNC strand so that it stretches across and has a nice curve going to it. You could actually even pull this down a little bit farther and you know, whatever you want to do to make it work for you. Make sure that your DNA is running through so that if you, uh, it's going off into the bleed area so that if it was trimmed, you wouldn't end up with something missing. The next thing I want to work with, we didn't really have a problem with this. Whoa, let me get Sorry about that. I accidentally turned on the perspective grid when I was going for my puppet tool. So let me go back up to the top here to my Einstein. And although I didn't have any issues with that, I'm going to go ahead and quickly redo that in here for you. So I needed to pick up Einstein and I need to copy him three times. And I'll get that caught up shortly. Now the fact that I shortened that up <clears throat> shouldn't make any difference that, it, that I didn't slide it down until after I completed that. That shouldn't make any difference in when I moved that. So uh, the next thing that I need to do is open up and show Einstein middle. Oh yes, and rename that back to Einstein left. Working with Einstein middle. Again, I'm going to crop that image. And let's do Einstein right. Let's change this back to Einstein middle. And let's
let's get into Einstein right. I need to drag that back down to the bottom edge. And we're going to change the size of that one, cropping it down. I need to pull that crop back out to the side, crop him in and down. to a height of 7.15. We next need to clo clone the Art of Science logo simply by holding down your Alt key. You can use your Shift key if you'd like and drag it across and place that into centered in that empty space on that panel. You're going to find that one slightly narrower, uh, remember, than what the width of that panel is because we had to narrow one, the outside size down to make it uh, able to be folded in. The next thing we needed to do at that point was to go into the graphics layer collapsed that, locked the graphics layer, and create a new layer that was called Type. And we will then start importing some text. Starting on the inside of the brochure, um, underneath this uh, logo for the Art of Science, we're going to go in and place some text. We're going to uh, pick up the CAC inside document and I'm going to show the import options and place that. I do not want to remove my text formatting at this point. I'm going to say OK to keeping that. I know that my Times New Roman text is not going to be there, but I am going to put my l cursor in somewhere a little bit below that text and I'm going to draw out and get my text box placed. I can then go up to my uh, direct selection tool or my selection tool rather, click the out port to get a loaded icon and I'm going to click to place my next group of text. Note that the same size box appears and I'm going to drag down to make that fit. But I'm going to stop that this time right above the Community Arts Council logo. Now I think I'll drag, drag it all the way down because otherwise we aren't going to get everything. Now there's still more text available but we're going to fix that by going up to Type and Show Hidden Characters. And we're going to start by first of all picking up our type tool and deleting the extra paragraph returns. We have a couple of those that we want to eliminate. That brings us up so that we can now see all of our text. We have a few things that we need to clean up in the text tool or in our text box. One of those is the fact that we have uh, our text box is just a hair narrower or well it's the wrong size so we want to click and drag that I'm holding down my control key so that I can get this to fit the margins correctly let me uh, fix that up there we go so now my text is within the text uh, safe area defined by the margins we are next going to start with, uh, you know what, I think I'm going to stop this.